Welcome to Shrive Skin's College Lunch Pad. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as the facilitator for our session today. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today to share more information about their school and their social science programs. Each presenter will have approximately six minutes to share this information. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first announcement, your camera and microphone are off, so our presenters are unable to see or hear you. Second announcement, you can use that Q&A feature in Zoom to type your questions to our presenters at any point throughout our session today. Third announcement, this is just one of a few different sessions that we're offering. So feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and you can access this recording by visiting shrivescan.com slash lunch. With all of that said, I wanna go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter from Colorado State University. All right, thank you, Jasmine. Just get my screen ready. And can you guys all hear me okay? We can. All right, my name is Ariel Pitzer. I'm an admissions counselor at Colorado State University Pueblo. And I'm gonna share with you folks about our social sciences program at our university. It is called CHAS, College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences. So firstly, just to let you guys know um, where we're located, we are located in Southern Colorado, about two hours south from Denver. So you'll see here we have the lovely Rocky Mountain chain on the west side. So you have uh, everything outdoors located from about 45 minutes away, the Spanish Peaks in Trinidad, Greenhorn Mountain in Rye, and then of course Pikes Peak in Colorado Springs. And there is a small uh, private airport in Pueblo and then the Colorado Springs Airport and Denver, Denver International Airport in Denver. So lots of ways to conduct traveling if you'd like to come visit us. So a little bit of background information on CSU Pueblo. We do belong to the CSU system, which includes Colorado State and Fort Collins, and then our school and CSU Global, which is our online campus. We are a smaller university with about 4,000 students enrolled at a time, which makes for an average class size of about 14. So in your CHAFS programs, you might have upwards of 25 to 30. It just depends on the program. Generally, uh, social work and psychology are a little bit more popular programs with higher enrollment per class. We do have about 40% first generation students in our student body, which what that means is that neither parent has graduated with a bachelor's degree. So I myself am a first gen student and we also offer a scholarship for that. We have about 50% of sorry, underrepresented community above our among our student body. And Pueblo is a very Hispanic serving community. So you will find CSU Pueblo is a Hispanic serving institution. And we are Colorado's first designated Purple Heart Campus, which what that means is we are very military veteran friendly. We do have a lot of resources for those type of students. So looking at the College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences, we do have a wide array of programs that we offer. Those include different schools or departments. So one that I like to mention is the School of Creativity and Practice. And what that includes is everything from your regular art courses to digital media and art, that sort of thing. And we do have a recording studio on campus with a student-led radio station. So that can fall in your major within the School of Creativity and Practice, or that could be a minor or just extracurricular activities or a work-study job. So here are some areas of exploration, art and creative media, and that is a bachelor's degree, whereas a few others on this list are either an emphasis area or maybe a minor or just courses. We do have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Creative Media. I'm moving on to our Department of History, Political Science, Philosophy, and Geography. The two bachelor's degrees that we offer in that program are in History and Political Science, and then we do offer a handful of minors. 
within our department of psychology, we just have a bachelor's of psychology. It could be bachelor of art or bachelor of science. If you do want to study psychology, but maybe it's not your main focus, we offer that in a minor as well, which is very popular. And then within our department of sociology, criminology, and anthropology, we do have a few different bachelors and a handful of minors. One that I really like to mention because not only is this a highly accredited uh, program, but it also has a very high job placement ranking, like within the upwards of 99 percentile, is our social work program. So we do have a bachelor's of social work, and upon graduating from the bachelor's program, students can then integrate into the master's of social work, and we actually offer all of those classes on the weekends so that you can still maintain a full job in that field. And we do have a grant initiative where students in the social work program do not have to pay for their textbooks. Within our Department of English and World Languages, we have an English bachelor, Spanish bachelor's, and a master's in English. And so that master's in social work and the master's in English are actually the only master's programs we offer within the CHAS. And then we do have a handful of minors within that department as well. Um, outside of academics, we do like our students to have a lot of fun, be involved as best they can on campus, so you can participate in over 70 cl 75 clubs and organizations, whether they are religious focused or outdoorsy or government, whatever it is, we have something for you. And I always tell folks, make sure you attend any campus event because if there's not some free swag items or free t-shirt, you are generally um, inclined to get free food of some kind, which who doesn't like free food? And then our Office of Student Engagement and Leadership, they are actually the office who host most events on campus throughout the year. You can always check them out and see what is going on that day. So looking at tuition and fees, if you are a Colorado resident, what that looks like for um, 30 credit hours per year, so 15 credit hours per semester, is about 10,600. And then your housing and meal plan, generally for a double room, which includes you and your roommate, a bathroom, and then two other roommates. So four folks to a suite mate. And that includes either 12, 14, or 17 meals per week in the Pat Cafe. So that makes for a total of about 21,000. And then the housing and meal plan is the same across the boards for Wui State students or Thunderwolf students. The only thing that changes there is the tuition and fees. So again, for a whole year, that makes for about 27,600. And then um, we do offer merit award. Our presidential scholar is 8,000 per year. And this just goes off of one of your highest um, achievements. So whether that's GPA, test scores, or class rank. And I know I'm running out of time. I just want to mention this real quick, real quick for my folks. Um, In-state or WUI students are eligible for free housing. So make sure you check out this interest form on our website. If you uh, do decide you are coming, if you accomplish all of the next steps that are required anyway, if you accomplish those by our deadline of June 1st, you get free housing. So definitely check that out. Here is my contact information if you'd like to apply. My fee waiver code is ARP. And here is my email and phone number, and I can put those in the chat as well. Thank you, Ariel. Our next presenter is from Oklahoma City University. Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Kiefer. I'm Assistant Director of Transfer and Military Admissions here at OCU. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you. All right. Okay. So as the name implies, we are in fact, of course, in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Um, we have about 3,000 total students, uh, roughly 1,600 of which are undergraduate students. So we're definitely a small liberal arts college and we like it that way. Um, we do have a number of graduate students, uh, about 600 plus, and then a number of law students as well, and even some doctoral programs on campus. Uh, we really are at the center of Oklahoma City, which is considered one of the best cities to be a college student in, both for jobs after you graduate from college, as well as opportunities in the city while you're there for your four years. Uh, we are consistently ranked as one of the top regional universities by U.S. News and World Reports. 
and we do have students from all over the world. I believe right now we have, if I remember correctly, 25 different countries, I think close to 35 or 40 different states, and about 45% of our student body comes from outside of the Sooner State. Um, and then we are affiliated with the United Methodist Church, and we are consistently ranked by College Raptor as one of Oklahoma's hidden gem colleges. So a little bit about what you're going to get uh, with any major at OCU, regardless of social science or not. Um, about 78% of our faculty hold the highest degree possible in their field. Average class size is 17, but honestly, once you're in your major, that can dip all the way down to about eight or nine. Uh, and 100% of our classes are taught by professors. We have no graduate assistants and no teaching assistants who teach courses. And we again, we have an 11 to 1 faculty to student ratio. Um, I always tell students when I'm talking with them, and this will be no different, um, if you are uncomfortable with the notion of a professor having your cell phone number, checking in with you if you're late for class, um, or honestly just following up with you or get, connecting with great ideas for internships or careers after you graduate, um, OC is not a great fit for you because I can promise as both the student myself and from other other students that is definitely a thing um, our faculty are here to help you and that is definitely true in the social sciences so our petrie college of arts and sciences is our largest school by sheer number of majors um, we have over 70 different programs at ocu but the majority of them live here in the petrie college so highlighting a couple of them in particular with social sciences uh, I'll actually start with psychology. We have one of the most rigorous programs of psychology in the state of Oklahoma in the region. Uh, we are consistently represented by our students um, going to regional and statewide conferences and presenting their papers and their undergraduate research. And currently we have a 100% placement rate uh, for students usually in graduate program of choice. So that kind of splits the difference between some students who choose to go the research route and do a doctoral program or a PhD uh, versus the students who are going into counseling or a PsyD program for a more clinical approach. Uh, similarly, we are definitely a, because of our law school uh, in Oklahoma, uh, we definitely have a ton of students who are pre-law and poli-sci. And in fact, we actually have this program right here, philosophy, political science, and economics. It's a BA program, uh, but it's actually a fast track to the OCU school of law. And so the cool part about that is students actually finish their bachelor's degree a year early, are able to start their law degree, their 1L year, a bit earlier and finish that early as well by combining that last year of undergrad and that 1L year. And so they get to not only go to law school, but of the students who've gone on to the OCU School of Law from that major, uh, I believe it's 100% of those students graduate in the top 10% of their law graduating classes. So not only are they getting into law school either with us or someone else, but they are doing exceptionally well when they're there. Uh, similarly, our mass communications program, we have had great success putting students to work both in broadcast journalism and in written mediums as well. In particular, we've sent a ton of, of our graduates to go on to be social media managers um, from everything from small nonprofits all the way up to large corporations, both in Oklahoma, Texas, and the surrounding region. And then last, I'll actually come back over here and talk briefly about our criminal justice Justice program, we have the option to do either a Bachelor of Science or a Bachelor of Arts there. Um, my favorite part about this program, and I think the thing that helps the most, is about 50% of our faculty in the criminal justice program are former law enforcement officers, and the other half are researchers. So the great part is you are getting a lot of that real world experienced understanding of the criminal justice system. But then on the other side, you're getting that research component to really help you understand where the field's going long term. And so you have the ability to not just get one or the other, but to have a great base of knowledge and know where you need to go from there. We have another program uh, in our Minder School of Business Economics and Business Administration. Um, and I will mention we are AACSB accredited, which puts us in the top 4.5% of business schools in the world. Um, and additionally, with economics, we are also home to the Steve Ag uh, Research Facility for Economic Policy. So a ton of great opportunities for our students to do that. Uh, last thing I'll mention here, we do have scholarships for both 
first time freshman students as well as for transfer students. Uh, and those range from different amounts based upon your GPA. Uh, and then we also have a number of competitive scholarships. And I show this just to show all the different scholarships we have specifically for our Petrie students or even for our Minder students. Um, so please check us out. We very much are an affordable option. Um, with all the scholarships that we offer. And that also includes for our transfer students. Um, you are able to apply at commonapp.org or on our website. Uh, and I will put my contact information in the chat momentarily for you. Looking. And our next presenter is from Western Colorado University. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Just give me a second to share my screen. There we go. Hello, everybody. My name is Alejandro Alejandre. I'm a regional director of recruitment for Western Colorado uh, University. Um, and I'm also an alum of Western class of 2018. Um, I just want to give you a quick overview about Western, just about location. We are located in Gunnison, Colorado. That's about three and a half four hours south of Denver. Now, I would say we're in a very neat location. Um, if you're big into the outdoors, uh, if you enjoy hiking, mountain biking, skiing, this is a perfect location for you. We do have Crested View, which is about 30 minutes north of town. It's a famous ski resort. Um, also, you can mountain bike, hike, uh, and I would say the colors in the fall are absolutely gorgeous. It's almost like a postcard, in my opinion. We do have Harmons, which is about five miles south of town. It's over 8,000 acres, and soon that's where your outdoor activities will most likely take place. So anything from backpacking, um, rock climbing, you can ski, Nordic ski, you can also, um, you can also uh, do a lot of activities outside. And then we also have Blue Mesa, which Blue Mesa is 10 miles west of town. It is the largest body of water in Colorado, so 20 miles long, and that's where your water activities will take place. So, we're in a small town, but there's a lot of things to do, and there's something for everybody, not just outdoors, but also indoors. We do have over 50 clubs and organizations. We have academic clubs that run in conjunction with an academic program, like your psychology club, pre-health club, um, your sociology club. And then you have your passion and interest, self-interest, passion and, and interest club, which I would say that's pretty explanatory. We do have athletics. We do compete in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference at the, at the Division II level. We also have mountain sports, club sports, and also intramural sports, something I highly recommend you doing, whether that's whether you attend Western or you go somewhere else, is make sure you get involved with clubs and also intramural sports. It's going to enrich your college experience. Uh, so definitely join those two things. In terms of academics, we are a four-year public liberal arts institution. Well, that means two years of general education courses is required. If you know what you want to study, you can dive into your program right away. Um, if you're still on the fence of what you want to study, don't worry about it. You can take general education classes those first two years. That's going to help you explore what you're interested in before you commit to a major and a minor, or you can double major. Some of the programs that we offer will be psychology, biology, anthropology. We also do have politics and government. We actually also have a Q plus two in creative writing, uh, where you receive your bachelor's and your master's in five years. It's not just going to save you time, but it's also going to save you money. Um, and also, we, all, we recently added a master's in behavioral, behavioral science. Uh, it's going to be in community rural health, and that's also with psychology. So later on, I can definitely foresee ex expanding those programs, but also uh, expanding our Q plus two programs where you receive that bachelor's and master's in five years. Um, but average class size of Western, 16. Just like all my colleagues have mentioned, they do start up with, you know, 25 students or so, but once you get into your major, those classes tend to get focused smaller. Uh, but average class size is 16, 71% of the class are taught by a full time professor, and 61% of those professors have terminal degrees, meaning that you're getting taught from someone you can say it's an expert in their field, and also someone that's fully dedicated to, dedicated to your education. You can talk to those professors before and after class or during their office hours, or something. It's, it's very neat that we have the opportunity. But at Western, we are fully dedicated to your success. I mean, we offer quite a bit of services. We have a math and writing center, which are free resources. So in case you need extra help, extra support, you want someone to proofread your paper, uh, like I said, we have those resources. Each student is going to be assigned academic advisor in their field. That advisor will guide you from your first year to your last year at Western. 
making sure you're doing all right, making sure you're taking advantage of the internships, things that are happening on campus and also on campus. Um, but we are definitely focused on your success. Uh, we have low cost, high value, tuition and cost. Our tuition is definitely below the national average for in-state and out-of-state. 80% uh, of the students receive some type of aid and 100% of them are considered for merit aid. Those merit scholarships uh, go upon, uh, they're upon acceptance and they go off your GPA. Those range from $25 to $4,500 a year. Um, for in-state, eight to $10,000 a year for out-of-state. Now, out-of-state students, if you are in the Wui or the Central Plates, you'll be able to pay 150% of Western's in-state tuition. That's going to be probably saving around $4,100. The catch is you cannot stack both of them together. Uh, if you get awarded the mayor scholarship, I mean, we'll automatically award you with that just because you'll receive more money. Um, but as I mentioned, we are test optional moving forward. So we don't need those test scores for admissions or scholarship purposes. The rest of the scholarship that we offer, well, you can go to, you can visit western.edu forward slash cost and you can just see all the program based scholarship and also our common scholarship. Uh, application. Uh, how to apply? Free, straightforward. You can apply to the Western application or the common application. Regardless how you apply, we'll need your high school transcripts. If you apply to the direct application, there's going to be a $30 application fee. Uh, you can call the missions office. You can call myself. I can give you that promo code to waive that application fee. The mid of 50 percentile students get made to Western have a, a 3.1 to a 3.9 GPA. If you're below that range, one of the things I definitely strongly recommend is submitting any material that will help support your application. But you can go to western.edu forward slash visit to schedule a campus visit. Those visits include information session, a campus tour, and then a meeting with a coach, professor, student of your choice. Uh, and also, uh, if you can't make those events, definitely go to western.edu forward slash recruitment events. We can see all the virtual events that we have coming up this, this spring and later on in the, in the fall. Uh, but you can uh, contact me, reach out to the missions office if there's anything we can help with. But uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Our next presenter is from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Greetings, everyone. Can you see my presentation? We can, Catherine. Thank you. Um, so I'm uh, Dr. Daniel Liu. I'm the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs in the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm here to represent uh, my university, which is about 53 years old. So we're pretty young, um, and yet we're pretty big. Um, we're located in Birmingham, Alabama. And um, my college is distinctive in that it uh, combines very strong academic programs, uh, outstanding teaching, and a diverse student body that's uh, nested in the uh, nested in the uh, uh, in the city, in the historic and vibrant city of Birmingham. Um, the College of Arts and Sciences in at UAB is the largest uh, academic and uh, entity and we've got about 30 majors and 50 minors. Um, so I'm here to talk about social science or social sciences. Um, we offer programs such as the uh, uh, anthropology, criminal justice, digital forensics, which really combines criminal justice and computer science, um, history, international studies, political science, uh, we are in the process of developing a human rights major, uh, which I anticipate we will get in two years, um, maybe one year, maybe two years. Uh, we have a psychology degree that's, uh, that's both online and on ground. Um, and the same professors teach online and on ground. Uh, we have a social work degree, a sociology, and a very unique program that's a medical sociology degree emphasizing uh, health disparities and the study of health disparities um, and medicine. Um, and so we have the PhD, but this is an undergrad degree. Um, I will showcase uh, anthropology here because this is a degree where you can hop on in five years to, you know, to the masters 
So this is what we call an ABM, bachelor's to master's. Uh, history is also functioning this way. Um, as I said, digital forensics is one of our showcase programs, so very popular with students. We also offer internships in all those programs and internship in digital forensics. We have a digital forensics lab where uh, students and uh, track actually criminal online, criminals online. Um, our psychology degree is one of the biggest majors on campus. Uh, what's interesting about it is that, as I said, it is online and it's, it's a BS that's online and that's on ground. Um, social work is very popular and medical sociology is also popular. We have a lot of double majors at UAB. And so this is a program that's popular with uh, students uh, majoring in the uh, sciences. So I'd like to spend some time on, whoops, on our unique features at UAB. First, uh, I'd like to highlight uh, our diversity, diversity of our student population. We have a high percentage of first generation students, but also a high percentage of first generation American students, um, and a high percentage of uh, African American uh, students. So we are diverse and we have a diverse faculty as well. We are in an urban, we are a green campus in an urban environment. Um, it looks green, it looks like a real campus and yet we are sort of in midtown. Uh, so we are down, downtown, you know, you see the tall buildings from our campus. Uh, the hospitals are right there. So UAB is a very large medical center. Um, and we attract a lot of students in the sciences, but also in other disciplines. And so the hospitals are right there. This includes Children's Hospital of Alabama and the UAB Hospital. Um, we are a stu studious environment. Uh, students come to UAB because they're interested in, in their studies, because their priority is their studies. Um, they are usually uh, high achievers and intellectuals. Uh, and yet we also offer uh, NCAA uh, Division I sports. Um, our mascot is Blaze the Dragon and we are the Blazers. Um, we highlight research. Uh, UAB is a research one institution. Uh, it's a public research university. And we like students to be involved in research as much as they can, uh, as much as they want. Uh, this will include, of course, research for in, in, the, in class, but also research beyond, beyond the class, but beyond the classroom. Uh, so this is pretty unique. We have a lot of labs on this campus, including a lot of labs in psychology, where students can get jobs and also research experiences. We highlight internship opportunities which is you know, um, easy to get in Birmingham because it's a city. And finally, student engagement. We have about 250 clubs and student organizations that are official plus the ones that are not official. Uh, so students, our students are very engaged. Um, they like to be engaged with their community and they like to find meaning in it. They can present at the expo uh, which is a research expo, but also, you know, um, they can present on their research, but they can also present on their service learning opportunities and the service learning activities. So um, I encourage you to like, look at us and come visit the, the website. And I thank you. And you have my email. I'm here if you have any questions and uh, I welcome you to UAB. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Our next presenter is from Texas State University. All right, hi there, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lauren Ibarra. I'm the Austin Regional Manager for the Texas State Office of Undergraduate Admissions. 
If you're not familiar with Texas State, we do have two campuses. We have one in San Marcos and one in Round Rock. San Marcos is gonna be kind of our more main campus. This is where the vast majority of our students are located. Um, if you're familiar with the tech, with Texas at all, we're right between Austin and San Antonio off the I-35 corridor. Um, so right in the middle of the two, probably about 30 minutes south of Austin. We do have a second campus in Round Rock, which is just north of Austin. That's gonna be home to junior and senior level coursework for some of our majors. Within the social sciences, that's going to look like criminal justice. That's, I think, the only course offering we really have for social sciences up at that campus. Um, our fall 2020 total enrollment was 37,812 students. So we do have quite a large student population. We do have 10 colleges which comprise the university. Um, but today I'm just gonna focus on those that are centered a little bit more around the social sciences. So first up, we have the College of Applied Arts. The College of Applied Arts is gonna be home to our criminal justice program. Our criminal justice uh, department is nationally recognized for its training program and hostage negotiation. They also have a yearly hostage negotiation competition. And it has also created an alert center, which is now the FBI standard worldwide. We also have a McCoy College of Business, which is gonna be home to our economics program. Um, something really cool about the economics program is that students get to uh, participate in a course called the Student Managed Investment Fund, which is where our students manage an endowment. And what's really cool about that is that our students were given $100,000 in 2008 to manage and have since grown it to $1.25 million today. And so they get that real live trading room experience at Texas State in that economics program. We also are going to have our College of Liberal Arts, and this is gonna be home to the vast majority of our social sciences programs. Um, starting with anthropology, we actually go all the way up to the doctoral level for forensic anthropology. Um, our Department of Anthropology actually operates the largest outdoor forensic laboratory in the world um, at Freeman Ranch, which is really cool. Um, this college also sponsors a multitude of study abroad programs each year to Europe, Latin America, and Asia, so really all over the world. Um, we have a phenomenal geography program. Our geography program is one of the largest in the United States and has consistently been recognized as one of the best, so that's pretty cool. And we also have a robust psychology program. We offer both the Bachelor of Arts and the Bachelors of Science in Psychology, so you do have options at Texas State. Um, this is where a lot of our programs or a lot of our students that are interested in social sciences usually end up is in that psychology program. Um, we're also gonna offer the forensic psychology minor. So if you have an interest in criminal justice and want to pair that with the minor, you can also do that here. We have majors in international studies as well. We're also going to have English, a couple of languages, philosophy, political science, and more. We are also gonna have pre-professional tracks that align with the social sciences, such as pre-law, um, if you're interested in doing something like that and thinking kind of bigger picture. Um, student involvement. So Texas State is the kind of place where our students really are hands-on. They are involved. We are an in-person institution. If you're going to go to Texas State, you can expect to at least live in the San Marcos area to pursue your education here. We have over 400 student organizations, um, ranging from professional clubs and interest groups, for fraternities and sororities, honors organizations, community service, and more. We have Bobcat Build, which is a really cool program where the entire campus community comes together to give back to San Marcos, which is where we're were housed. San Marcos population is around 69,000 and campus is almost 40,000 people if you count like staff and faculty and everybody. Um, so it's pretty cool that we get to give back to the San Marcos area um, through that project. We also have dozens of intramural leagues, tournaments and esports. We're going to have 16 D1 sports teams. We are in the Sunbelt Conference and 35 sports clubs as well. In terms of applying to Texas State right now for 2022 terms, we are still um, doing basically test optional if you're in the top 75% of the class. We're not sure yet for 2023 terms, but you can expect an update soon. Um, how do you apply to Texas State? You'll either go to goapplytexas.org or Coalition for College, fill out the application in full, submit an optional application essay. You don't have to submit one, so please don't let that hold you back. Um, send your high school transcript or a GED test with scores, um, submit the application to you have $75. There are a few waivers available and send any official college transcripts. So if you did any sort of dual credit, you'll want to send that. I don't think you need to send the ACT or SAT test for unless we ask you for it. I wouldn't necessarily send it. And it says our priority date for the fall is March 1, but we've actually extended to June 1st. So you have plenty of time um, to still submit an application for this fall and actually still be considered for merit scholarships all the way up until August. If you're a transfer student interested 
interested in going to Texas State, it's going to be based on how many transferable credit hours you have. I recommend finding your admissions counselor and reaching out to them before you apply as a transfer student, just because that can be a little bit more nuanced. But if you do want to apply, you feel like you're ready to, you're going to complete your transfer application at goapplytexas.org or Coalition for College. Um, for the summer, that deadline's May 1, and for the fall, that's actually been extended to August 1st. You have plenty of time there. Um, in terms of paying for college for Texas State, I mentioned that we have assured scholarships all the way up until August. This is true for both freshmen and transfer students that are coming this fall. If you're a freshman, you're in the top 35% of the class, you're being considered for a merit-based scholarship. If you're a transfer student and have at least 30 hours in the 3.25 GPA, you're also going to be considered for an assured scholarship. Thank you for your time. Definitely come visit Texas State if you have time. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. If you scan that QR code, it's going to show you all the different things we talked about today and more um, and easy links to get to where you want to be. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Lauren. We are now concluding the presentation portion of our session and moving towards the q and I want to encourage all of our presenters to return. Please turn on your camera and I will pose a question to the group. Our presenters will respond to the question in the order in which they present it. The question is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your social science program? So we'll start with uh, Ariel. Cool, thank you, Jasmine. Um, one thing I'd say about the social science program is that there's a lot of variety, a lot of differentiation among degrees and programs. Um, just because you go into the social science program of your choice doesn't mean it's like concrete and written in stone. You can still do a lot of things with that degree and you can still choose a minor or multiple, multiple minors if you are interested in that. Okay, um, so I think the big thing that I would encourage students to remember about our social science programs is ours are very collaborative in nature. Um, we have a large campus of undergraduate research, even scholarship opportunities for that. Um, but we are very collaborative um, when that comes down to it. Um, so, you know, like I mentioned, we have several minor programs as well, but we have several that are truly collaborative between our School of Religion and our psychology program and our criminal justice program even. Um, so beyond just the ability to go to grad school or to have a rewarding career in social sciences, we really do want you to have sort of an interdisciplinary view of whatever your social science is, um, because there's going to be different fields that interact with yours, um, whether that be neurology with psychology or, uh, for instance, the way that the School of Religion teaches negotiation with our criminal justice program for peace and justice studies, um, any number of things like that. So collaboration, I think, is probably one of the biggest keys um, for us when it comes to social sciences. Yeah, uh, one of the things I would say that, you know, just taking off from our social sciences at Western is uh, it's very hands-on. Um, you know, you really do get build that personal relationship with your professors and you really get to learn from them. And, you know, if you ever need assistance from them, like I said, the doors are always open. Um, but like I said, it's also very hands on where there's a lot of internship uh, opportunities in the community and also in other places outside the community. So, um, yeah, there's that. Is it my turn? So I, I would say because we are a research uh, institution, um, we place a great emphasis on critical thinking, but also on intellectual curiosity. Uh, when you have professors who are researchers, um, they are also you know, curious minds um, and they are able to, transfer, to transmit this curiosity to students. Uh, so it's a, you know, it's a great asset. Uh, for us, and uh, our, the common denominator between with between our programs in social sciences is really the um, understanding of the human experience of human society, but also uh, for us the understanding of disparities and equity, um, and um, how we can make. Uh, 
our planet and our, our societies and our communities better. Now for Texas State, one of the things that I want you to take away about our social sciences programs is that they are all throughout the different colleges at the university. We have almost 100 undergraduate degrees that you can explore at Texas State, and you could even honestly create your own social sciences experience if you wanted to through the general studies program as well. Um, I think something I want you to take with you is that we do have plenty of research opportunities at Texas State and that there's a spot for everyone here. If you have any interest in Texas State at all, definitely reach out to me or to one of my colleagues and we'd be happy to talk to you more in depth about one of our programs. Thank you all for your responses. The next question, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So again, we'll start with Ariel. Yeah, so my advice um, to students who are kind of going through the process, looking at colleges and trying to choose one, is to visit as many campuses as you can. I know you probably hear this a lot from your parents or your high school counselors, but it is kind of like, you know, buying a car, or choosing a house. You want to see it and see if it feels right and see if it's a good fit for you. And the more campuses you visit, you might find something that really stands out and is like really beautiful or really unique about a campus. And that will help you make the decision that that's where you want to attend. So one thing that I would say, and, you know, I'm first generation myself, and so this was definitely something that surprised me. Um, it's a lot of work. Um, this, this process is pretty labor intensive if you're going about it right. And if you find yourself thinking, man, this is a lot of reading websites, this is a lot of talking to counselors, this is a lot of scheduling visits, you're probably doing it right. Um, and that's not to say that it's not a big decision and a hard decision to make, but just know that too, is that the payoff for all this work is getting a college experience that you're going to enjoy, that you feel ownership in, and that you have a stake in. Um, and just to reiterate that, like, I was looking through colleges all of my junior and senior year, and it wasn't until March of my senior year that I ended up hearing about and finding the school that I ended up attending and loving for four years. So um, the work is worth it, uh, but it is a lot of work. I would say try to talk. Oh, is it my turn? I say try to talk to as many professors as you can and as many students as you can. Um, you know, hear the perspective of the people who are there, who um, who live it every day. Uh, and of course, you know this goes um, you know with visits, but sometimes there are other ways to to achieve the same uh, outcome. Um, but uh, yes, be curious, open-minded, and uh, you know, ready to experience different things. And in the end, make a rational decision. Um, my advice goes in hand with what Catherine just mentioned. Um, you know, when you visit a school, make sure you connect with an admissions counselor and also try to talk to a professor and just try to dive in more into the program that you're interested. Uh, and also the biggest thing is to make sure you do scholarships. It is not just about what type of school you're looking for, but also how you're gonna pay for it. So make sure you talk to every school that when you connect with those admissions counselors, um, asking about what institutional scholarships are. When you talk to those professors, ask about any program-based scholarship that you can take advantage of while you, you continue your studies. And also make sure you stay in touch with your high school counselors. They're the ones who will be able to help you with any local scholarships. So everyone's offered really great advice, and these are all things that I would probably like to say, so I'm going to try to find something new. Um, I would recommend definitely making sure you understand the admission requirements for your program. All of us are super different, um, and so I would definitely look into that ahead of time. If you have any questions, again, you know, feel free to reach out to an admissions counselor, whether it's about your program, we typically know where to direct you, or if it's about um, the admission requirements, we're obviously going to know that if you have financial aid questions, generally we can help put you in contact with the right person and more. Um, so definitely take advantage of the resources that you have. 
the ones the um y'all are here so y'all are already doing that y'all have already been part of that process you're doing yourself a huge service by being here um so definitely you know take advantage of the connections you're making you have all of our contact information now reach out to us if you have any questions Great advice from the group. We are approaching the end of our uh, college launch pad, but I do have a few closing announcements to share with all of our attendees. As you exit from this session, a survey will appear. It's approximately five questions or so, but please, please complete the survey. It's extremely useful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings in the future. I also want to remind you to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, you can access this recording by visiting strivescan.com slash launch. With all that said, I wanna thank our amazing presenters for joining me, but also thank you to all of our attendees. I hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine.